Baldur's Gate 3, an already incredibly content-rich game, has received steady updates ever since it launched in Early Access way back and all the way through the full release. And recently, Larian added full in-game mod support for their RPG masterpiece. Here's the myriad ways you can search for and install mods in Baldur's Gate 3. Before we get started, there's a lot of factors at play here, including which method you choose, whether you're using a third-party mod manager, and even when you watch this video, as this stuff changes pretty fast. We'll go over some of the troubleshooting issues you may encounter, but we won't be able to cover everything. Otherwise, I'll still be talking by the time Baldur's Gate 4 comes out. Nobody wants that. For additional troubleshooting info beyond the scope of what we cover here, or for specific mod questions, the Baldur's Gate 3 website, particular mod FAQ pages, or Reddit threads with people having the same issue will probably be your best bet. As of the making of this video, the PC version of Baldur's Gate 3 is one patch ahead of consoles, patch 7 as opposed to patch 6, meaning consoles still have no official mod support. You can even filter them by console availability, but you still can't use them in-game until patch 7 drops. Before you start modding, it's worth checking out this warning on Larian's mod support page on the BG3 website. While we're still working on bringing crossplay to Baldur's Gate 3 in a future update, there are some important things to keep in mind if you intend to mod your game and play your save across different platforms, or cross-saves. As we prepare to release patch 7 on console, cross-saves will not be compatible, as your PC save will be on a different game version. Once patch 7 is released on console, we recommend ensuring that the mods you opt to install are available on console if you intend to play across both PC and console. So continue at your own crossplay peril if you plan on making a leap to console at some point on a modded PC save, as official mod support hasn't been implemented there yet. If playing multiplayer, you also need to ensure that everyone you're playing with has the same mods installed, down to the same version numbers. First, there's the obvious. The in-game mod manager is accessible right from the title screen. This is by far the easiest way to mod your game as you can just click download to add a particular mod to your install window. Then you can just double check that the mod has a green check mark next to it to ensure that it's installed. If you would rather browse on the Baldur's Gate 3 website, you can search, filter, and subscribe to mods directly from here and they'll be added to your in-game mod manager. It may ask you to make a mod.io account and or connect your Steam account, but once you have everything set, it's just as easy as using the in-game mod manager. One important thing to note is that if you're applying a mod to a pre-existing save, you'll probably get this notification while loading. This doesn't always mean the mod won't work, it's just letting you know that the save is detecting something that wasn't there before. Other than ease of use, the other benefit that comes with using mod.io through the game's main menu or website is increased compatibility. In Larian's own words, Updates to Baldur's Gate 3 as well as conflicts between third-party mods can cause issues with game stability and prevent mods from working correctly. That's where official support comes in. We will never prevent modding outside of our own official pipeline, but implementing our own will improve compatibility and give us the opportunity to ensure they'll work wherever you're playing Baldur's Gate 3. It'll also ensure a smoother experience at the cost of more script-focused modding, which can still be done outside of our pipeline. So what you gain in convenience, you give up in choice. This will also be the only way to use mods on console, although they'll have to go through a second curation check, so the selection of mods may be pretty sparse, we'll have to see. If you want to explore the full depth of what the modding scene has to offer on PC, including heavily script-altering mods, you're better off going third-party, which we'll cover next. Nexus Mods and their in-house mod manager Vortex is the most popular third-party way to mod out there. Everything from Bethesda games to Cyberpunk all have heavily active scenes on Nexus mods, and the process has gotten pretty easy. You just need to make an account, download Vortex, which is their mod manager, and add these mods through the Nexus mods website. When downloading each mod, it will tell you any mod dependencies that you'll need to also download to make that mod work, and whether you'll actually need a different mod manager. More on that here in a bit. You can enable or disable mods after they've been installed, and Vortex should run the correct mod order for you. You may get a few error messages and require some more finagling and downloads, but Vortex does a pretty good job at pointing you where you need to go to get it working, with some patience. Another third-party option that some mods actually require is the Baldur's Gate 3 Mod Manager from GitHub. Full instructions for downloading it will be on the file page, but to simplify, the steps you'll need to take will be to first run Baldur's Gate 3 at least once so the correct folders can be created, download the Mod Manager, extract it to a folder that's not protected, and make sure the correct file path populates in the General tab of the Preferences menu, or browse for it yourself. Once you have the Mod Manager running, 
You can import your mods that you've downloaded the pack files for, drag them to the left side of the screen to set them active, and then reorder them as the dependencies dictate. Then, next to Export, click on the Export Order to Game button before launching Baldur's Gate 3. And again, this is just the basic rundown of how to get it working, and it has much more functionality than we have time for here. But if you have issues with any of these steps, the GitHub page breaks it down in greater detail. Since both Vortex and the BG3 Mod Manager are third party, you'll most likely run into more compatibility issues, such as mod creators not updating their mods to the newest patch. You'll need to keep an eye on when the mod was last updated, as well as posts from the creator detailing issues. But you can get some pretty wild stuff on there when you're not constrained by the first party guidelines. So if you're planning on making the most out of modding BG3, and don't mind fiddling with the smaller stuff, this is a great way to go. Here's a quick showcase of some of the mods we've been messing around with. It's hard to show ones that get into the nitty gritty of stat, class, and character changes, so we'll just show a few visual mods, or ones that are easier to see at a glance. First is Kethrix armor, which gives you this crazy good set of Kethrix gear at the very beginning of the game in this chest. Next is Faces of Faerun, which adds more customization options in the character creator. And here we have Tasha's Cauldron of Hairstyles, which adds quite a few ornamented and unadorned hairstyles. Thanks for watching, and we hope this helped. For more on Baldur's Gate 3, be sure to check out our huge guide on IGN.com. And for everything else gaming, you're already in the right place. IGN.